Glücklich ist Weihnachtsfest. Willkommen zu meinem Haus. Ich denke, wir in Deutschland machen Christmas brillant. Um zu zeigen, wie es geht, bitte folgen Sie mir in mein Haus. I grew up in a very small village in Bavaria, about 50 miles southwest of Munich. In our family, there were four children, uh, two boys, two girls. I was the youngest. And I can always remember that even when I was a little child, I mean, my first memories of Christmas, I went to Christmas mass. Very often we had snow, of course, being very near to the Alps. So that makes it all very romantic. And here we've got an advent wreath, which is a very, very important thing in any German household at the Christmas. Every week you light a candle up to Christmas. As for the Christmas tree, it has to be a real tree, of course. It cannot be one of those artificial ones. And it has to be well decorated. The lights have to be right. You need lots of little baubles on there. Biscuits and Leibkuhns are important. And of course, we need a little nutcracker there as well. Well, I don't think you can exaggerate the importance of the Christmas tree in Germany. Um, it starts with the selection. I always remember as a child, the whole family with my father, never with my mother, always with my father, we used to go off to buy the Christmas tree. That was on Christmas Eve in the morning, sort of about 10 o'clock in the morning. Whenever we came home, my mother used to shout, it's too big, it's too, you know, I told you to buy a smaller one because obviously it took over most of the space in the living room. Apart from Christmas trees and, and Advent wreath, you, you get things like nutcrackers, for instance, and that goes back to the 18th century. Now you, you find this little uh, man standing around in, in people's homes. And it's quite a romantic little story, which, which uh, um, gets sort of children's imagination going. And here we have a, a very traditional uh, German Lebkuchenhaus, which comes from Nuremberg originally. And I'm sure you agree with me that this makes a children's uh, Christmas so much sweeter than it otherwise would be. About five or six weeks before Christmas, my mother told us that she would make Christmas biscuits, and that, that was always a riotous day. Very often I found myself in the kitchen with my mother and nobody else, because the others were making music. Uh, but which was quite nice in many ways. Who knows, perhaps that instilled the sort of, you know, the starting of a little cooking career in me. You never know, I mean, certainly these biscuits must have helped. If you had eaten one of my mother's coconut biscuits, it's heaven. Celebrations unlike in Britain happen on, on Christmas Eve. This is the important uh, day, really. There was Christmas dinner, which was about six o'clock. Then after Christmas, anybody presents, and that was so. Somehow, although the dinner was an important part of it, but when you were a child, I mean, you couldn't wait for the dinner to be finished <laughs> to get to the presents, naturally. When I look at Christmas, I think Christmas is all about your children, even when they are big now, as they are now. It's all about your children, it's all about the family, and bring in together and have a happy time. And I think Christmas is family and a little bit of happiness. And what would Christmas be without the traditional Christmas dinner? And of course, in my family, like in every other family in this country, I mean, there were huge arguments about what to have. I mean, my father, I always remember him, he said, oh, I would like to have a saddle of venison. And my mother always wanted a goose. What do you think we had every time? We had goose. So what we need first is we need to stuff the goose with a little bit of apple and sage. And then we mix all this together. And then we stuff it into the back of the goose. Then we season it with salt and pepper. And then you have to dress the thing. Here I've got a, an old roasting, an old large roasting tray, and I've put a little bit of water in there. The water is in there to take out the fat from the goose. But with this little uh, trick here, and this little tip here, all the fat will come out of the goose, and you just have to ladle it out. So the goose goes in there, and it goes on its side, so we start off with one leg, and then afterwards, of course, we'll, we'll, uh, we will turn that over. And it goes into the oven at roughly about 180 degrees Celsius. And it will take about two hours, and we turn it twice. Right, there's no goose without red cabbage, of course. And what I've done here, I've got some red cabbage, which I shredded, and then marinated in wine, so I just put a little bit of wine over the top, mixed it up so it's nicely coated, and so that deepens the color and that gives you a much better result afterwards. And also there's a bit of acidity in there which helps the digestion, of course. In here, I've got the gloves and I've got the black peppercorns. I tie them up a little bit because I think it's much nicer. Once it's cooked, you fish it out and then you don't get the peppercorns or the gloves in your mold. Here I've got some onions, which I shredded. To this I add some goose fat. 
So you add the sugar in there, and you caramelize it for about two, three minutes. Then we add the cabbage to the pot, together with all the juices, with all the wine. And then we add a little chicken stock and some salt and pepper. We bring it to the boil. There we are. And once that is done, a lid goes on the top and it goes into the oven, 200 degrees, and it will take you about 45 to 50 minutes. Right, our goose should be ready now after two hours. A delight, I would say. Right, and here we have got our German Christmas feast. We've got, obviously, as a centerpiece, we've got the goose, the roast goose with the potatoes. But here I've got the black forest onion tart, delicious, and the apples in puff pastry with this butter sauce. Last but not least, we've got the Stollen here, a marzipan feast, very much like the Christmas cake in England, something you would eat with a cup of tea after your lunch. Last but not least, uh, I'd like to wish you a very happy Christmas, or as we would say in Germany, Frohe Weihnachten. <laughs>